Give me one second to sync the cameras. Thanks for watching. resemble a good mood. Um, the two things to get to, first and foremost, is we have a lot of Fukushima news, so hit subscribe, because if you only tune in for the massive Fukushima update, you miss the huge nuke update I did about halfway through the month. You have to subscribe. I run a political show, and I run a very anti-nuke show. You have to subscribe. Speaking of the political side... And uh, if you don't like politics, wait five minutes. Go go get, get something to eat because we have so much Fukushima news. This show is going to last 100 years and you're going to want to hear all of it because it's important. Um, we have to get to this. And how does it tie into Fukushima? Um, one way is that the more libertarian-minded people, when they start talking about wanting to take subsidies away from businesses, they will stop funding nuclear power plants if you get a more libertarian-minded, anti-subsidy person in office. Now, a lot of people might think that that person is Ted Cruz. Sam, he's a libertarian. He, he stands with Rand Paul. This man has more banker ties than the Marquis de, had, Marquis de Sade had wrist ties. This man, I'm sorry, I don't trust him. I do not trust him at all. The other thing is, love or hate Trump, Trump is against a lot of the subsidies. I don't know what his stance on nuclear is, but let me ask you a question. If you're watching this, hopefully you're anti-nuke. When you get to the rest of the news I have, if not, you will be by the end of the show, I promise you. Um, who do you trust more? Donald Trump, who is tied to no banker, these are the people that fund GE, who is TEPCO, nuclear, Westinghouse, nuclear, or Donald Trump, who is not tied to any bank. I guess the only thing you'd have to worry then is whether or not Trump is personally pro-nuke. But I'm mentioning this because I am so let down by my nation today that I could vomit. I weep for my country. At least it's not, you know, at least it's not Bush. Okay, I'll give you that. It's not Chris Christie. Okay, I guess it could be much worse. Cruz, eight delegates. Trump, seven delegates. Very bad news. Carson, three. Paul has gotten one delegate. Okay, when, earlier when I looked this up, he had no delegates. So I do think that the... Uh, the comment line says that he had zero. It was true at the time that I did it. I'll fix it if I remember and get a chance. Bush, unfortunately, also got one delegate. Uh, getting none were Feriona, Kasich, Huckabee, Christie, and Santorum. Everybody hates Huckabee, and I don't know why. He seems like a decent person to me. He did okay with the, the when he was governor. He hates him. I don't know why. But I think I'm going to vote for Trump. If Paul had picked up zero, I was about to come on here and tell you that I was voting for Trump. And here's why. I do not believe in the lesser of two evils. That would be Bush and Clinton. I will not vote for either one of them. Because you're picking the lesser of two evils. I do not feel that Trump is evil. I fear that he is the lesser of two goods. Uh, by that I mean Cruz and Trump, not Hillary or Trump. Um, I don't trust Cruz because of the people that fund him. I really, really like Rand Paul. But you know what, Rand? You were out talking about Planned Parenthood while Trump was owning the tax issue. The tax issue has always been yours, Rand. And you were out talking about Planned Parenthood and Trump went straight to the top. 
and if it angers the Rand Paul camp that I am likely leaving him behind in order to try to get Trump in when it gets to Ohio, I'll say this. I stood with you, Rand, about as long as you stood for your dad. You went ahead and endorsed Romney while your dad was still in the election. So if it comes down to Trump or Cruz, Rand, I am ditching you in voting for Trump. If it looks like Trump already has it in the bag, then I will vote for Rand. Also, if Rand was to pick up steam, then of course I would. But Rand, I'm sorry you blew it this year. You ran the worst campaign ever. And that brings us to the official start of the Fukushima update, and this is why I told you to get something to eat, get something to drink, which I don't have, but that's fine. I'm going to be hurting in about an hour. This is where you're going to want to pay attention. You're going to want to take notes, and you're going to want to hit subscribe, and you're going to say, oh my god, that was the most informative article, where did he find it? Survivalmedia.com. Fukushima crisis continues, what all preppers should know. When it comes to chaotic nightmare scenario, earthquakes, tsunamis, and nuclear accidents easily rank at the top of just about everyone's list. On the other hand, there is also the pervasive sense among preppers that these scenarios are not likely to happen in their area, let alone strike all at one time. Of course, that's what's happened in Japan. At least 610 workers and nearby residents died due to radiation exposure, and thousands are expected to develop cancers related to exposure to radiation. The toll is greatest on children, of whom over one-third already show signs of abnormal growth in their thyroid glands and increased risk of cancer. What does that mean? Friends, you do not dilute. I always say uh, uh, you can dilute the radiation by putting it into the ocean because the ocean is so vast that it will absorb it. The trouble is it doesn't break it down. So it floats, depending on its uh, characteristics, or it sinks to the bottom in any event, it sooner or later gets back in the food chain anyway, and it is, they don't have, they have half-lives of millions of years. Look up how long plutonium is deadly. You, it's, we're talking God numbers here. It'll be just as deadly a hundred years from now as it is now. And it's getting into our food supply. You can't even catch tuna out of the Pacific Ocean. There are zero tuna that don't have tumors in them. Cancer. Zero. Zero. They all tested, for, I mean, not cancer, excuse me, radiation. They all tested positive for radiation. Every single one of them. 610 now. Much higher in the future. Thousands, maybe a million. And it's coming here. It's already in our food supply. It's drenching California. If you live on the west coast of California, you're an idiot. You might as well just juice yourself now, shoot yourself, you're done. It's an awful place to live. It says, uh, to put it simply, the Fukushima nuclear crisis is still ongoing and presents a danger to everyone in its path. It is estimated that at least 520, I've always heard 30, tons of radioactive water found its way into the Pacific Ocean, that is daily, and at least 50 grams of plutonium were released directly into the air, plus an undisclosed amount of radioactive materials. 50 grams of plutonium could produce an explosion that would normally take 750 pounds or 300 kilograms of TNT. Now keep in mind this just isn't an explosion though. When TNT explodes, the, most of the toxins are gone immediately. That is not the case with plutonium. It, again, it will, and this is scientific fact. You could poison someone with plutonium, bury them in the ground, grow food above their grave, if they were in a coffin, and the plutonium that came up in the plant over a period of time would be just as deadly as the plutonium that killed him. You could dig his body up a hundred years from now and it'd be just as deadly. That's what this stuff is. It says the radioactive half-life, which is what I'm talking about here, of materials used to produce nuclear reactors spans thousands of hundreds of thousands of years. When these particles find their way to the water supply, the air, soil, they will remain radioactive and continue to pose a serious danger to almost all life forms. Do you understand that? Other than the bacteria that live in radioactive reactors, which are like amoebas, Everything else is poisoned by it. What do you hear? Nothing. Nobody's talking about it at all. 
It says, how is the Fukushima crisis impacting the U.S.? As of December 2015, radiation from Fukushima has reached the western shores of the U.S. and Canada. Yes, that would mean you cannot live in Los Angeles. That is not a real wise idea. Probably not. It is estimated that some isotopes have jumped as much as 50% in concentration. However, government agencies still claim that radiation levels are not high enough to promote the idea that people should stop swimming, boating, or eating on coastal waters. Which is nonsense. That's, that's to keep the tourism money coming. That's to keep the economy afloat. Because they care more about that than whether or not you develop a cancer in your whatever and have to get it removed, cut out, and die early. They don't care about that. They just want to make sure you stay there and keep their economy afloat. This mirrors Japan's claim that their coastal waters in the area are safe despite the fact that radiation levels are 10 to 100 times higher than what is currently being seen along the west coast of the United States and Canada. Uh, look up beautiful girl Dana. Look at the work he did on the Pacific Ocean and the things that he found out. The mass die-off that's in certain areas. The way these places have looked historically for the last 100 years and now look after Fukushima. Everything's dead. Ask fishermen that fish, the deep, uh, that fish deeply in the uh, Pacific Ocean. They'll say they've never seen die-offs like this. It's leading in some cases to overfishing in the Atlantic. It says, again, chap lips, if you don't live in a cold climate, you wonder, why is he playing with his mouth? He's got like a Carl Jung mental disorder. As a prepper, dealing with a nuclear crisis is something that is sure to have crossed your mind. Um, and this is why you would want to. Increasing levels of radiation from Fukushima are readily detectable now along the western coast of the U.S., the progression, it says, of the radiation has progressed inland and now <clears throat> shows up in water and soil located further away from the ocean. If you buy food or water from areas currently contaminated by radioactive materials from Fukushima, try to avoid fruits and vegetables from California. I know it's unbelievably hard to do so. But one of the things you can do is make sure your oranges come from Florida. Do not get oranges from California under any circumstances. Avoid California raisins. You can see why here. It says there is no way to know if these consumable goods are even safe. This includes wine, cigarettes. What's worse than what's worse than, worse? Uh, blah, blah. What's worse than smoking a cigarette? Smoking a cigarette with parts of plutonium in it come to mind. Just about anything else that you think is safe to consume just because it said made in the United States. Unlike Chernobyl and nuclear bomb explosions, the radiation leaking from Fukushima has not stopped. It said it's impossible for consumers to determine almost if elevated radiation levels are coming from Fukushima or a nearby plant or some other source of radioactive material. Being able to keep an eye on being able to expose to radiation is still one of the most important things you can do, and there are three things you can do to find out if you are being exposed. Keep an eye on the data released by Fukushima watch groups and nuclear plants in your area, including controversial ones. Keep carry, that's Kerkerny, KFM fallout meters in several locations at home and in the office. These devices are easy to make and can help you correlate information found in other reports. I didn't know that. I'm glad I do. Always be aware, it says, of what area of the world what food is grown and processed in. Never forget that dust and contaminated water easily find their way into plants and animals and then into your body. Obesity is an indicator of thyroid problems that can lead to thyroid cancer. On the other hand, thyroid cancers are some of the most common types that people get when exposed to nuclear radiation. Leukemia and blood cancers are also very common in people that have been exposed to radiation. Now you know why the guy with the hat's talking into the camera. I wear a hat, by the way, because I sweat at work and my hair is always stringy when I get home. And if I wash it, by the time all of you are used to tuning in, you've all left. Uh, to protect your body from ionizing radiation, regardless of the source, increase your vitamin C intake. Have I not been saying that for eons? I take two emergency a day. They don't pay me a cent, so you can get the generic I normally do. I just forget what it's called. And um, I tend to drink... Life water, vitamin water, they don't pay me either, so the generic is fine throughout the day. Um, I try to avoid pop unless I'm in a club and you get it rum, you gotta put it in something. 
It says, and it works as a natural shield. If you have been exposed to radiation, make the use of herbal remedies that either inhibit tumor growth or stop it. That would be selenium. Um, there are many other teas and solutions that will increase pH, a more alkaline level, so that it is harder for cancer cells to grow. I'm not going to get into that right now, but look up alkaline body types. The more alkaline your body is, the harder it is for cancer to grow because it does not grow in an alkaline pH. If you don't know what that is, it's, it's something you can make your body do that will stop cancer growth based on what you eat and what you bring into your body. Um, I've wanted to do it for a while. I need to look into it better. I eat horribly. I don't even eat today. Because I was doing this. Where is America's Fukushima? Well, I can show you the hot spots here. I'm not going to go over each one. Again, this is at survivalmedia.com, and it's a rather long article, but there are some... Uh, look, you see that? Did you see that? That would be the most dangerous place in the world to live. And yet, I talk about it, and people will not listen to me. California is safe. It is not safe. Absolutely is not safe. It's nothing even close to safe. Does that look safe to you? God in heaven. Earthquake or tsunami. It doesn't have to be an earthquake or a tsunami in the... I'm having trouble with my connection. I'm trying to reconnect live. Don't go away, HDF people. I'm trying to get this to reconnect. Oh, I gotta love that, don't I? All right, well, I'll just try while I'm talking, man. Um, there, it's a dreadful place to live. It's absolutely the most dangerous place to live ever. If you live there, you're sentencing yourself to doom. You guys haven't missed anything. Thank you, HDF, for holding on with that. It says, what about long-term consequences? You've missed nothing. Loss of areas to grow food. Once the land is contaminated by nuclear waste, such as the materials away from the Fukushima plant, it can no longer be trusted to sustain plants that will be consumed for food. Here are some reasons why raising, rising levels of radiation from Fuku being detected in the soil represents such a problem. Any plants that are able to grow in areas contaminated with nuclear waste show severe genetic deformities. Clover with five or more leaves, other plants with odd-shaped flowers, stunted growth, giant or excessive growth, stock tumors, yes, plants do develop tumor growth or knots, increased susceptibility to infection and other problems. And much of that is transferred into you, when you do something like uh, unwisely eat it. So it does matter, friends. It matters a whole lot. Um, some plants and mushrooms, I love mushrooms. Guess what? I do not eat them. They soak up radiation out of the ground like a sponge. They're great to grow if you're going to get rid of them, if you're trying to soak up radiation, but you want to stay away from them and not breathe them in. They are the sponges. They're like a carp of land. Some plants and mushrooms are known to pull toxic radioactive waste from the soil and incorporate it into their leaves, roots, stems, and flowers. Aside from tobacco and its notorious tendency to pull polonium from the soil, which makes cigarettes even more deadly, some species of mushrooms and conifers also pull radioactive materials from the soil. Still, there are no lists of edible plants that pull more radioactive material than others. Failing crops, droughts, floods, and other severe weather patterns all contribute to soil erosion, which does what brings the radioactivity deeper into the ground when you grow your food. A loss of water resources. Um, and this would be, again, dust and other radioactive materials in the water pose some serious, serious health problems. This is what uh, you get to enjoy in California, and this is what ultimately gets uh, put on the food that helps you grow even though heavy metals can be removed from water by distilling it, there are very few ways to remove tritium, which is a radioactive form of hydrogen. Think, um, Hindenburg. From potable water supplies, tritium is commonly released by nuclear reactors, including those at Fukushima in Japan that was damaged. Now, pause. Do you realize they release tritium into the atmosphere even when the plant is running properly? And they say, oh, it doesn't hurt anyone. Looks to me like it's hurting a whole lot. Who's with me? Leave a comment. Who's with me here? 
To this day, Japan is still trying to figure out what to do with tritium waste left behind. Oh, it's in leaking barrels right now. Other than releasing it into the ocean, they are also considering simply letting the water evaporate or trying to bury it. The trouble is, that's not going to work. Some of these barrels have rubber seals instead of metal seals, and the radioactivity is just eating through the rubber seal. So it's going to get into the ground when they bury it, but you don't see it, so it's fine. Since it tends to be very hard to detect tritium in water supplies, there are very few, if any ways, for governing bodies to determine how much of this type of nuclear waste is washing up on the shores or falling along the coast of the U.S. and in heavily populated areas. We hope you're okay. If not, that cancer's fine. Just keep buying things. If you watch the news forecast, then it's easy to see what water from one end of the country, or even the world, can move all over the place in a very short period of time. As a result, it is very possible that people on the east coast of the United States may be dealing with the consequences of the Fukushima crisis well before they expected to. In terms of setting up a safe homestead, there is no such thing as a water supply that will remain uncontaminated because of the way water cycles so easily from the air to the ground. Which is another reason to uh, shut the funding off for these kinds of things. Again, if, there, if the candidate's talking anti-subsidy, that's good. And I know Cruz speaks a good game, but look who funds him, friends. Look who his wife is. His wife's a banker! Many people think that the oceans are endless bodies of salt water, fail to realize that enormous amounts of water evaporate from them on a daily basis. Without this evaporation, supplies of potable water on land would never be replenished. When the oceans are polluted by radioactive materials, the water throughout the entire world also gets contaminated. Loss of safe hunting and fishing areas. Loss of safe air to breathe. Uh, there are a few things to consider. Water always evaporates, and so it does. It will carry small particles of radiation, along, radioactive material, along with it. In this case, tritium, which they can't get out of the water, will be carried along because it is the lightest of all radioactive materials, which is why they're having trouble with it. As water seeps into the land, particles of radioactive debris will be left behind, and as the soil dries out and turns to dust, it will blow along with the wind, which means that radioactive materials are right back into the air. This matters for a number of reasons, friends. I'm a snowboarder. The snow holds the radiation in the water. You just have to hope you don't fall where a particle of radiation is. I know that sounds stupid, but that's literally what it's come down to. And I pity anybody boarding on the, on the West Coast. You might as well just uh, go to Japan and surf. Cycles of nature aside, uh, there are already statements coming out of Japan to the effect that they don't know how to alleviate the problems caused by Fukushima. They knew about tritium before they ever started these nuclear plants. But now they're, well, we don't know what to do. You never should have opened them, for one thing. And now you need to shut them down now that you have and just do the best you can with the waste. Uh, look up Chris Busby, Nuclear Waste, for a uh, source there. Uh, impacts on the economy. It says, in a sense, running a country is not so different from running a business. When you own a business, those who buy from you must have confidence that the products are safe. Yeah, well, I, I gave up drinking uh, sake. I used to love plum sake. I don't drink that hardly ever. Um, ever, ever. I think I drank it at my wedding was the last time I drank it, way back in July. Um, and there's more information here. I, did, I wouldn't buy, you can see the graphs as I scroll down fact cam. Um, I, I try not to get Japanese automobiles anymore used because I don't want to have the parts from Japan in my car. It says what we should do. Everyone was focused on trying to avoid a nuclear war, and nuclear holocaust is already underway because of the ongoing price crisis in Japan. Never forget that governments conspired to unleash a technology that they did not have full control of and is now presenting a very serious threat to millions of people right here in the U.S. Now is the time to demand answers and action on a problem that is much worse than anything that could have come from conventional guns or even forms of energy generation. That includes cars. Another reason I'm so angry about the uh, Sanders support and the Hillary support is that so many of you, I'm libertarian, 
I think stopping the subsidies will end nuclear power plants. You guys are convinced that man is warming the planet, even though the planet hasn't warmed in 15 years, some say 17 years. You can look it up, look, planet hasn't warmed 15 years, it'll come right up in a million sources. The answer that the green side has, which is, in this instance, not so much the party, the Democrats, the socialists, is more of nuclear power plants. Man isn't warming the planet, but even if they were, the solution would not be nuclear power plants. You cannot support Hillary and Bernie in this. You can't. Because if you do that, then you might as well just plug yourself into the damn reactor. These are the people that let this happen. Now is the time to... I read that. Take the time now to demand answers, and as a, uh, uh, a forum you can sign, uh, obviously, on the site. Go look it up. You get a better look at the graphs. A, uh, the Ashahi.com, they're back. I had not been on the site in a minute. Fukushima to turn to third-party mediator to resolve dispute claims with TEPCO. This is like calling in a marriage counselor after you've already killed your spouse. But at least it will prevent them from doing any more damage. The Fukushima prefectural government, exasperated by Tokyo Electric Power, that is TEPCO, that is GE's foot dragging, plans to turn to a third-party organ for the first time to resolve a dispute over damages arising from the 11 disaster, nuclear disaster. Prefectural authorities, it's like a state, will be seeking an estimated 1 billion yen, that's 9 million dollars, in compensation for expenses resulting from the triple meltdown at the Fukushima No. 1 nuclear power plant. As the two sides remain far apart on key issues, prefectural officials decided to ask the central government's nuclear damage claim to dispute the resolution and to serve as a mediator. This is dragging out for so long, and again, you can see exactly where all the money is going to go for this. You just see it coming, friends. All of you that follow me on this, too, you also know that I do, the, uh, I do more than just the... Japan side of this disaster. I do all of it. And now we've got North Korea. That is the the great state, the powerful state, the must be revered Kim Jong Il. North Korea claims fully successful miniaturized hydrogen bomb test. Great. That's like me saying an infant has a semiotic machine gun. North Korea has announced that it has successfully tested a miniaturized hydrogen bomb following an artificial seismic event that has likely become the country's fourth known nuclear test. And again, they have poisoned huge segments of the region where their nuclear power plant is already. They don't even know for sure how badly poisoned North Korea is. And that's going to be important if they ever, uh, when this regime finally falls, you're going to want to watch your food from certain areas of North Korea, too. And you won't hear that from anybody but me, because right now nobody's thinking about eating North Korean food because they have none. But once this regime crashes, they're going to open up the market and everyone's going to be thrilled.